my wife Claire uh, and I set up Farms for City Children back in 1976, a long time ago. Um, I'll tell you why in a minute, but I think around about 70,000 children now have come to these farms. There are now three of them in this country and one in the United States of America. Why did we do it? Well, we're both teachers. Um, Claire was a teacher, um, little children, and I taught older children. Both of us, I think, realized very early on that children can't learn everything in school, particularly those children who have very little, go very few places, and don't get the opportunities that some other children get. We did a lot of research in universities. We asked a lot of teachers, and everyone came back with the same idea. If you can enrich a child's life very young and give them positive memories, make them feel useful and responsible and happy, um, connect them to the, the adult world, make, they, make them feel they belong somewhere, you've got a really good chance of turning lives around. So we decided to give it a go. We were quite young, and I think you would only do these rather brave and foolish things when you're quite young. The idea of the charity was to enable as many city children as possible to come from their cities to live and work in the countryside. And by work, I do mean work. It's not a, they don't work in the sense of having clipboards and just copying things down. They contribute to the work of the farming. They get up at the crack of dawn and they go milking and they go feeding pigs and they feed sheep and they move sheep and they feed hens and they do all the things you can do in the farm within the bounds of safety. And in between whiles we feed them like kings and queens because they need lots of energy. The teachers go with them so they're working with their teachers and for the teachers it's a strange place as well, completely strange. So they're all very wide-eyed and, and wowy about it. and They have to endure hot weather, cold weather, snow. They live through it all, out in it all. And what's really marvellous is that they discover that the animals come first on this farm, not their comfort. In other words, if it's snowing or if it's a nasty wind and it's cold, hard cheese, you go out and you feed your sheep because otherwise they don't get fed. And the children understand that. They really ha understand and empathise with what it is to be a creature. And they don't mind at all. They don't like it any more than the farmer does. They work very hard, maybe a five or six hour working day out on the farm. Um, they do the feeding of the animals, they do the mucking out, they do whatever needs to be done in the bounds of safety to keep this farm running. That was the idea, to immerse them, if you like, in the running of a farm, to find out where their food comes from, about conservation, about how we, we, need, we need to plant trees, for instance, and we need to build otter holes for the otters, so the connection to wildlife is always there. And they also get tractor rides down the farm. So there's a lot of fun, but a lot of hard work, all mixed in together. Very intense, very tiring, and at the end of the week they go back with their heads filled and also with a huge confidence that they have been able to join in this enterprise. It worked um, better than we ever could possibly have dreamed it would. And we knew it worked because the schools kept wanting to come back and back and back and back. And so you kind of have those contacts which go on and you know that it's made a big impression on people's lives, which was the idea of it, to enrich their lives. It's like a good book actually. It's losing yourself in a whole other world you didn't know existed and exposing children to beauty as well. And when they look out of the window, what are they seeing? They're seeing great Devon skies and trees and, and birds and lawns and flowers. That's kind of better, I think, than the view from many tower blocks. And it fills them with an idea, this place is lovely and I like to be here and it's mine. Sense of possession and belonging is very important. So that's why we did it. We've now got these uh, three farms, I say, one in Devon, the original one, Nethercott House, one, the second one is at uh, Lower Treguinis near St David's in Wales. And the third one is a place called Wick Court in Gloucestershire. All three of them are very different farms. The one in Wales, for instance, is right on the cliff with the sea there, and Ramsey Island out there. And uh, it's a sort of seaside farm, really. Um, belongs to the National Trust, but we've taken a farm for city children has taken a lease on it for 100 years, which will see me out. Um, and there they work, but it's a very hard landscape to work in because there's lots and lots of wind. Wick Court is much more lush. It's in the Severn Valley near Bristol. A uh, tiny farm really compared to the others, but a wonderful moated medieval manor house where the children live. So they live in a place which Queen Elizabeth I slept. So that's what we did. And then all these years later now, we've got 70,000 children who have been to the farms. Um, and we have three farms working now. And it'd be great if um, maybe other kids would come from your school back.